Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm John. This is Mania True Nerd, and welcome back to Fading Hearts, where I hope this isn't the first part you've watched, because you've just joined me talking to a maid in a maid cafe, and you probably don't have a particularly positive opinion of me if you don't understand the context of that. And the maid wants to ask me an odd question. Let's find out what that actually is. We talk about anime and manga all the time. How can you have a question more odd than that? Sure thing. Ask away. Well, how do I put this? Don't you think Alex is kind of... different? What do you mean? We all have our quirks, don't we? Well, I'm just saying that Alex doesn't seem like your typical otaku. Not a typical otaku? Where did you get that from? I don't get it. What's so different about him? Well, I've noticed he has a strong distaste for girls who get jealous. Jealous girls are a really popular type in anime. I think some guys like them because it shows how much they care, but Alex says girls like that are unappealing. Well, jealousy is an ugly thing in real life, being a sign of insecurity and distrust. Maybe he's just more grounded in reality instead of anime than some otaku people. But it's not just that. He always takes good care of his looks, and he seems to attract a lot of attention from girls. Well, this does support what Sophia told me earlier in the game, which is Alex was actually like a notorious playboy before he moved to this city, which I kind of thought was a weird, just kind of uh, fourth wall breaking joke because he actually knows a lot about dating games, so he's he's a notorious kind of Casanova because he understands the rules of how dating games work. But, I don't know, I guess maybe, maybe this means I should have taken that actually literally. Is it really so strange that he cares about personal hygiene? Well, no. But the way he speaks with the other customers is too logical. The way he analyses fiction based on reality is if he's talking about actual girls. He doesn't even like the clumsy girl archetype. She's the most popular. Well, it might be endearing in a story, but it's pretty aggravating when things get broken in real life. But at least you understand it's supposed to be cute. Alex doesn't see that at all. I see. Sounds like Alex is more down to earth than I thought. I wonder why he hides that side of himself from me. Maybe he's actually one of those wings of light guys. Well, yes, that is what you were told. That is what you were told. Okay, something to think about at least. Oh, it looks like lunch is almost over. I better get back to class before the bell rings. <sighs> I let out a weary sigh and relax in my seat. Man, I felt a little off these past few weeks. I wonder if it's just the season or something. Hmm? There's something in my desk I definitely didn't put there. Is it a letter? It's a short message printed out on a piece of copy paper. Ryu, I need to speak to you. Please come to the park after school today. May the light bring hope to all. Wait, wait, that was... Oh, bloody hell! Someone sent me a message and said that they'd know it was from me if they said that, but who was it? Was it the player or was it... Mi no, it was Mystica. It was Mystica, right? That was, that was the code word Mystica told me the first time I met her. I think, but I can't remember because I record these and publish them in very different order. So the, the gap between me playing this now and playing the first part is actually quite a long time. But I think that was Mystica's code word. Those words. Mystica! Oh, I didn't even need to remember. Luckily, the game told me. Something must be terribly wrong. She wouldn't want to meet me otherwise. I wonder what kind of problem it must be. If it's beyond the power of a magical girl to solve. Should I go? Well, yes, of course we're going. Of course we're bloody going. Right. Can I just ignore something like this? What sort of idiot says no? The mystical hot girl says, Oh, come and meet me. I want to meet up with you in the park. You say, Nah. I've got to go home and work on the search engine optimization today. Right, let's see what goes on. I arrive at the park and look around, but no one else is here. There's no way this could be a trap, right? After all, Mr. gave me a password, so no one could impersonate her. Ooh, the world's gone inverted. What? What's going on? Hello, Ryu. Sorry about the strange setting. So you're the reason no one else is here. It's just a simple spell to ensure we won't be disturbed. Is this another dimension? How how many other games did your character just get to look around and go, huh, we another dimension then? Game of the flipping year. Nothing that complicated. It just sort of encourages people to go somewhere else when they try to approach. The human mind is a very open suggestion. But anyway, I summoned you because I have important news for you. There's no easy way to tell you, but, oh, is this it? We're finally getting some of the big revelations behind the game, behind everything. You must stay away from Rena at all costs. What? 
Okay. But you're Rena. You're Rena. Why are you lying to me? Oh, I think you're, you might be Rena. Bloody, no bloody clue. Right, why are you saying that? What? Why? She is the source of all the shadows plaguing this si What? <laughs> what? The, the cute, clumsy, possibly sicko who I thought was you is the source of all the shadow monsters, the shadow wolves and the shadow scorpions and the other creatures that were made in paint. No. The truth is, she's an evil sorceress who practices the... game I've ever played. <laughs> She's an evil sorceress who practices the dark arts. Soon she will unleash all the shadows on the city. This is a joke, right? Rena is nothing like that. Mystica, I trust you, but I can't believe you on this one. I'm sorry. Didn't you think it was suspicious? All those times she had to leave unexpectedly? Well, yes, because she was you. That was why I was thinking, oh wait, hang on, if Mystica, if Rena is Mystica, and Rena clearly doesn't want to hang out with me, because as Rena's speaking to Ryu, she broke up, she, yeah, so as Rena's speaking to Ryu, she broke up with me and made up the story about Claire, but that clearly hasn't worked, I'm still in love with her, so now, as Mystica, she'd approached me and told me this ridiculous story about Rena to try and get me to stay away, because she wants to just, he, she just wants to scare me off her so that I don't get involved because she wants because it's for my own safety so I think she's lying to try and just get me to leave Rena alone so I yeah that's what I think is what's going on here what how did you know about that I've been watching her you have no idea how worried I've been about you Ryu being so close to such a ruthless person <laughs> so please for your own sake you must stay away from Rena will you promise me that no I refuse. I refuse. I can't do that. Rena is an important person to me, no matter what you say. I won't abandon her. Ryu. I understand how you feel. And truly, it is commendable that you want to stand by your friend. But you must stay away from her. No! No, no, no! I can't do that, Mystica. I love her. If Rena's in some kind of trouble now, is when she needs me most. Mystica falls silent. I'm afraid you leave me no choice, Ro- Oh. Uh-oh. I feel like I may have just annoyed the person who has the ability to control dimensions and time. That's not good. Even if I must use for- Oh, bloody hell! Do I have to fight Mystica? I will not stand by and allow Rena to take another life. I'll give you one last chance. Promise me you will never see Rena again. No, 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 no. I've been training. I've been doing weightlifting so I can beat up the sorceress. I tell you, what, I've done pretty well in the forest against the creatures. If this is a boss fight, I can deal with this. No, refuse. How many times do I have to tell you? I'll never abandon her, no matter what you say. I made a promise to her that if she couldn't go on, I would help her, no matter what. I'm not going back on it. I can't ask you to forgive me for what I'm about to do, but... I'm sorry, Ryu. Prepare yourself. Oh, I'm actually fighting her. Right, okay, how powerful is she? I, I might be able to take her out, but I don't have any offensive magic, so I've just got to punch her in the face. <laughs> okay, right, let's start off with a triple punch. Okay, Mystica dodges the attack. Ryu takes zero points of damage. Wait, what? Can we not hurt each other? Yeah, just attack. Mystica dodges the attack. Mystica, okay, so Mystica's dodged all the attacks. And she's attacking me, but I'm taking no points of damage because I've got strong defense. Oh, flipping heck. Um, So she's dodging every, every punch I'm throwing at her, but she doesn't seem to be able to hurt me either. What's going on? How can you shrug off my magic so easily? Well, because I've been 
weightlifting. And I suppose also because I've got the barrier spell, but I haven't even been casting it. So Mystica dodging times three. And Ryo takes a tiny bit of damage, but barely any. I suppose it's because my special defense is so high now. I mean, what's my... What are my stats like? They're pretty good. I mean, I'm up to level 20. Well, my strength is level 24. So if I can just land a hit, we're in good shape. But she's dodging everything. You're pretty amazing, Ryu. But I won't give up either. Well, <laughs> she's doing the like, I'm nearly dead, but I'm not going to give up speech. But despite the fact I haven't managed to land a hit on her yet, but she can barely touch me either. Yep, all dodgers. Mystica, I am the harbinger of light. All right, then. Um, I'm going to think that was her charging up solar beam there. Let's try a few more punches. All missed. Ryo takes 30 points of damage. She can't kill me, though. Is this good? Where is this going to go? I don't understand. You never should have lasted this long. I have no choice but to use that spell. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Oh, flip. Um... I'm just going to attack and then start barrier and healing behind it. Dodge, barrier, and heal up. The emissary of everyone's hope. Yeah. Attack, attack, barrier. Dodge, dodge. I'm going to cast a barrier. For the sake of a brighter tomorrow. Oh, she is solar beaming like crazy, but I'm hiding behind my barrier, so it's fine. So, yeah, let's just do this again. Dodge, dodge. I can't hit her. That's so annoying. Barrier, it's over. Final strike! I had a barrier up. I'm so sorry, Ryu. Cabin fever. Find yourself in a cabin. Wait, what? What? Rina. No. Those were the last words I uttered before everything faded to darkness. Ryu, don't go, I'm scared, a young girl's voice wails. I remember this, that camping trip, right? How long ago was this? Rina and I got separated from the others. We ate the snacks we were carrying, but the sun was setting. It was getting colder, and we still couldn't find anyone. I wanted to leave Rina there to rest while I looked for everyone, but... No, don't leave me alone. Rina started to cry and clutched my arm in fear. What did I say to her that day, when all hope seemed lost, when we were both scared and lonely? I'll never abandon you, Rena. Ever. What? Rena. I'm... Alive? What the hell is going on? My eyes open slowly in an unfamiliar place. Where is this? A cabin? I fought with Mystica. She defeated me rather easily. No, she didn't. And quite frankly, she cheated because I had my impenetrable barrier up. So I don't know how her final strike got through it. My mind's still hazy about the details, but I don't feel any pain. She must have healed my wounds at some point. I rise to my feet to have a look at my new surroundings. The room is small and lacking in furnishings. Besides the bed where I was sleeping, all I see is a fireplace and a table with some food prepared on it. Along with the food is a note. Sorry, Ryu. This room has been sealed with a magical spell. You won't be able to escape from it. This was the only choice I had to save your life. Just sit tight and wait till I take care of the final boss, okay? And may the light bring hope to all. Looks like I'm Mystica's prisoner. Should I try and escape now? Well, probably, yes. My alternative is, well, I guess I'll just sit in the room and eat food. Yes, let's escape. Even if she says it's hopeless, I still have to try. After all, I do have magical powers. I walk up to the door and grab the knob, twisting it with all my might. What the? It's as if the doorknob were fused to the lock or a prop attached to the background. It doesn't give at all, no matter how hard I turn it. Maybe I can smash it, though. I give the door an experimental kick for good measure, but it's equally solid and doesn't budge. Ah, damn it! I guess this place really is sealed magically. There's nothing I can do about it. Ryu! After all, th there's a big day coming up. Ryu! Rina? 
Mystica is going to kill her, isn't she? I have to save her. But contrary to my bold declaration, there still isn't a way to escape. My best chance will be whenever Mystica finally returns. I can only hope it'll be in time to do something. In the meantime, I guess I'll check out the food Mystica left for me. A convenience store sandwich and a drink. It's not much, but she could have left me with nothing. The fact that so little probably means she'll be returning soon. That thought bolsters me, and I decide to eat it now. I unwrap the sandwich and start to bite into it but hesitate. She wouldn't have tampered with it, would she? No, probably not. I'm already her prisoner. If she wanted to kill me, she would have done so already. On that rationale, I chow down on the sandwich. On the other hand, all the preservatives in the food might be enough to kill me any... That's very random thought there, Ryu. And it's going dark. Hours pass. There's still no sign of Mystica. Just as I'm about to fall asleep from boredom, I hear the door opening. She's back. I don't bother to get out of bed to greet her. Hi, Ryu. How was lunch? I'm really, really sorry, Ryu. I didn't want to do this. <sighs> okay. Relent a little. Don't forgive her. I need to... F yeah, let's focus. Let's... Relent a little. No, I need to focus. I need to focus. I can't let Mystica distract me from what's most important. Saving Rena. Mystica feels that as a magical girl, it's her duty to stop Rena at all costs. I still can't imagine that's true though, and Mystica hasn't shown me any proof. Sure, Rena's been running off on mysterious errands for a while now, but it's circumstantial evidence at best. Still, I do wonder what she's been up to. Is it part-time modelling job really that time-consuming? Ryu? Mystica's gaze is full of sorrow. Is something wrong? Is there anything at all I can do for you? Her voice is so gentle and soft, I can tell she's genuinely concerned for me. Against all the odds, I feel just a little bit better. I'll try to make you as comfortable here as I can. Would you like something to read? I believe you like manga, yes? I can bring some for you. I suppose that would be okay. Alright, I'll bring you some books with your next meal. She's opening the door now to leave. This is my chance. Yes, let's let's see what we can do. Let's try to escape. As soon as she opens the door, I make a dash for the entrance. Oh, I feel like that didn't work. Ah! A sudden impact on my chest knocks me to the ground. Ryu, why are you doing this? I'm sorry, but I can't risk you interfering. I feel something tight constricting my left arm. What the? What's this on my arm? It's a magical chain to prevent you from escaping. I ignore her and try to get up. But the chain on my arm pulls me back to the floor. Ow! Please don't try to escape anymore. You will only hurt yourself if you do. Mystica, even for you, this is too much. It'll be over soon. Just wait until I get back, please. I'm sorry, Ryu. I'm so sorry. Mystica leaves. I hear the quiet hum of magic as the door locks behind her. Man, I'm so tired. Maybe I should rest a while. I wake up slowly, a little befuddled at first to find myself in such different surroundings. It's night time now, and there's a pile of manga on the floor. Did she buy all of this for me? Should I read some manga? Yes, okay. Well, I, I learned spells from manga, so maybe I'll learn a spell to actually let me escape. And... What series should I read? Um... Which one of these have I read already? Um... Have I read Little Disruptor? Nothing to read in this series. Okay. Yes. And I've read A Prince's Tale. Yep. Okay. What's Provisional Princess? Ooh, okay. So we've got new stories here. All right, let's read this then. So I start reading Provisional Princess, Volume 1. The story is about a kind-hearted Celia, princess of a magical country. But in that land, the reigning queen is always a woman with the most magical power. Whether or not Celia will succeed her mother remains to be seen, hence the manga's title. The castle staff adore Celia and spoil her outrageously, but she resents this because she wants to become strong enough to ascend to the throne someday. She decides to secretly undergo harsh training, convinces one of her mother's advisors to help her. Her first lesson is the magic blast spell. Oh, you see? I'm learning magic already. I sh oh, yeah, okay, keep reading, keep reading. I'm learning all sorts of useful stuff here. 
So Celia begins jogging every morning in order to strengthen her heart. But even after several weeks, she's disappointed to find her magic has barely improved. Her teacher gently corrects her that the text refers to the emotional strength of the heart, not its physical state. He tells her that kind and empathetic people have a lot of magical power and that she shouldn't worry because she is well endowed with both. Celia is disappointed with this answer as she doesn't feel very strong and wasted so much time exercising. The advisor consoles her by pointing out that her mind and body are connected so a strong body is a good foundation for a strong heart. Even though it's not the outcome she was hoping for, she decides to be content with it. I start reading Provisional Princess Part 3. Celia is making a journey to the nearby town where her retinue is attacked by a rebel group. Her guards are quickly overwhelmed, but she manages to hold out until reinforcements arrive. Afterwards, she's stunned by what she was able to accomplish. The captain of the guards tells her that she inherited tremendous power from her mother. It makes Celia happy, but later she realises something else too. During the battle, she never thought about what would happen if she lost. She was focused solely on protecting the unconscious mage knights. This must be what her teacher meant about emotional strength. I really need to think about what to do. Should I try to escape in the night? Oh, oh, wait, it, it, have I just kind of, did I just put down the manga and go back into Ryu mode there? It seems like this place is awfully deep in the forest though. No doubt that the shadow monsters are prowling around out there, but they haven't attacked this place. Probably that barrier she put up keeps them out, besides keeping me in. I might not be able to get through them all once I get through the barrier. No, I'm good with my healing and my barrier. I'm really good at taking out shadow monsters, so I'll be fine if I get through the barrier, that is. Oh, Mystica's back again. I'm glad to see you're okay, if you can call it that. I brought you something, so please eat up, okay? You need to keep up your strength. Fine. Well, she's right about that. If I want to do something, I'll need the strength to act. I make short work of the cheap convenience store food she offers me. Ryu, what? I'm really, really sorry. You keep saying that. But I know you're not a villain, but I still can't... Yeah, okay, let's 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 be kind of sympathetic. I know you're not a villain. Let's see if we can talk around to be a bit nicer. Even so, I can't just say it's all alright, okay? So just stop apologising already. Ryu. If I tell you something about the situation, will it make you feel a little better? Yeah, it might do. Rena has incredible magical ability. The problem is... It's all out of control right now. She's been suffering for a long time, and as a result, her powers have gone berserk. She can no longer hold them back, and they've now completely taken her over. What? I know it's a little hard to understand, but magic and emotions go hand in hand. The more pain you're in, as well as the more power you possess, the harder it is to control it. Then maybe I can help her. I'm sure that's what she meant when she asked me to promise. No, I'm fairly certain you are the problem. What? It's not an easy thing to say, but Rena likes you. I knew that. So you're saying that's why the shadow started to appear? Mystica nods slowly. I see. But then, why did she break up with me? I love her too! She felt it was a necessary sacrifice to separate Claire from her boyfriend. If you could convince her to go with you instead, she would be safe. <laughs> Are you now saying that I have to go out with Claire in order to save the world from shadow monsters? Are these the stakes that we're now... <laughs> I love this game. But why me? Claire never listens to anyone, least of all me. You fool. Are you really so blind to Claire's true feelings? How would you know? Have you been stalking her too? Oh. Oh. I didn't know whose powers had gone out of control first. I had to gather information on a number of people. You mean Claire as well? Yes. So you got Sophia to spy for you? No. The thing is, I'm a magical girl after all. I have other means of finding out what I need to know. I'm so sorry, Ryu, for snooping on you and your friend so much. Mystica? Can you do me a favour? What sort of favour? When you see Rena, please tell her. No matter what she's become, I'll never stop caring about her. I'm sorry I couldn't erase the story. Okay, let's go for the top one. I like Rena. Let's go for the top one. Do you really mean that, Ryu? 
Of course, no matter what happens, she'll always be the girl I love. She was always the kindest, most pure-hearted person I knew. Just being around her made me happy. Even if she was some villain, even if she makes it out of this alive, I'll embrace her with open arms, because I know there's still goodness in her heart. You know what? You may have found the key to saving her. What? Really? If those words can touch her heart, she may come to her senses. But please understand, it's only a chance. It may not work. You have to try, Mystica, please. You have to save her if you can. Of course, we have to save everyone we can. Rina's breaking point will be about four days from now. Once that happens, an unspeakable disaster will be unleashed on this city. I must stop her before then. So I must leave to begin my preparations. I'm afraid you'll have to remain here for now. With that, Mystica departs. I'm exhausted by the exchange, so I decide to get some rest. I lie down and stare at the ceiling, wondering what will become of Rena. Oh my goodness, so the tumultuous relationship I've had with Rena and her stress about me and about Claire and her abusive boyfriend has caused the shadow monsters. Oh my goodness, this game is wonderful. I go to bed and fall asleep and apparently get all my hit points back and magic points back and lovely. All the things are healed up. Where am I? Oh right, I'm still Mystica's captive. I sit up to see that Mystica has left more food for me. There's enough food for breakfast, lunch and dinner. I guess she won't be back for a whole day then. I've, I've only got four days until Mystica has to kill Rena. Should I read some manga? Yes, let's learn some more spells. Let's figure out where Provisional Princess is going. Start reading Provisional Princess Volume 4. An entourage from the neighbouring realm arrives, including the prince of that country. Celia notices the way the girls fawn over him, and because she dislikes the way people spoil her, she makes a point of treating him informally. The prince is taken aback by this, and questions her about it, so she tells him about her own experiences as a princess. They both enjoy talking to one another about their shared feelings and frustrations as members of royalty. The prince is impressed when he hears about how hard she's training to be worthy of the throne and tells her as much. His sincere words fluster her and make her blush. Shall I read some more manga? Yes, let's finish off this story. Where does the provisional princess go? The time when the queen's successor will be selected is rapidly approaching. Celia is desperate to be chosen but doubts she is truly the strongest magic user in the land. As she wonders what to do, one of her court ladies informs her that she's getting married is a sure way to become more powerful, but Celia is hesitant to go along with this. She takes a solitary stroll to clear her mind. As she walks, she finds a beggar who entreats her to spend a little time conversing with him. In the meantime, the court lady secretly arranges a meeting with some of the queen's advisers for the princess to be betrothed to the prince visiting the country. When Celia finds out, she's torn between her desire to become the queen and her desire to be honest about her preferences to marry for love. She confides her dilemma to the beggar, who continues sneaking into the palace to see her, despite Celia's worries that he'll be caught and punished. Eventually, the day of the wedding ceremony arrives, and she ultimately realises she can't go through with it, and why. She tells the stunned guest she will not marry the prince, because she loves someone else. Suddenly, the prince reveals himself to be the very beggar she loves. When he saw the effort Celia was making to earn her place on the throne, he decided he had to win her heart by his own efforts as well. The two of them are joyfully married, but the ominous hooded onlooker hints that the author might draw a sequel at some point. Oh my goodness. Well, a happy end, but sadly, not one that gave me a magic spell. So we've only got one thing left that we haven't read. Um, the, uh, yeah, the Royal Guard's life. And this is a hell of a long one. This is actually a hell of a long one. In fact, you know what? Time is actually getting ahead of me on this one, and once again, uh, we've got uh, we've got a fair bit to read, and we're apparently, I think next time, it sounds like it could well be, or either the conclusion or getting damn close, because I'm Mystica's Prisoner, I've only got four days to go until, well, a fireworks display that's possibly also the end of the world and the shadow monsters destroying all of creation, and I've got to learn enough magic to protect my love of my life, Rena, who is apparently also an evil sorceress who's gone mad a bit like Willow in Buffy. So we've got to do that next time. So there we are. That is in the next part. In the meantime, I've been John, this has been Many a True Nerd, and this has been the increasingly exciting and revelation-filled Fading Hearts. Thank you very much, and goodbye.